Okay, <clears throat> and welcome to my talk on uh, message authentication revisited, which is joint work with Evgeny Dodi, Saike Kiltz, and Daniel Wicks. Um, so I think you all know what uh, message authentication means, and the goal to achieve it in the secret key setting is by the use of uh, message authentication codes. So these max are fundamental cryptographic primitives. Um, defined by a triple of algorithms, a key generation algorithm that simply outputs a, a secret key K and a, uh, an algorithm, a tagging algorithm that takes the secret key, a message M, and outputs a tag phi, and the verification algorithm that takes the message, the tag, and the key, and then either accepts or rejects. And of course, you know, if everything was correctly generated, it should always accept, and we will see the security definition in a minute. Um, historically, uh, message authentication codes have not been constructed directly, but people just use pseudorandom function as message authentication code. So if you have a pseudorandom function, uh, pseudorandom function, you know, just using this pseudorandom function to compute the tags, and verification is simply, you know, check if this uh, fee is really the output of the PRF on key K message M, will be a secure MAC if the range of this pseudorandom function is large enough. So if you search a PRF, then you have a MAC. Maybe if you need larger domain for your larger message domain, you can use some of the domain extension techniques for PRFs, like CBC or HMAC or you know, hashtag encrypt. And to instantiate your pseudorandom function, you have several options. You can use like one of these standard uh, secret key heuristic construction, IES or SHA. Or maybe you want to use something, an algebraic construction, for example, uh, the now wrangled PRF based on the DDH assumption or the, the assumption from uh, LWE that we will see later in this conference. Um, you, of course, so these constructions are much less efficient than the standard construction, so why would you use them? Maybe you know, you're crazy about theory and you want a provable uh, security proof. But more importantly, these this algebraic PRFs are zero-knowledge friendly, so it's much easier to come with uh, correctness proofs that you know, that you, uh, as used, for example, in eCache. Okay. So let's see what the state of the art is in constructing such algebraic PRFs. So I mentioned before, this is the now wrangled PRF. The only important thing is that the key is roughly as linear number of elements, so the bit length of bit size of the key is going to be at least quadratic in some security parameter. Another option would be to use an algebraic pseudorandom generator. So for DDH, you get a very efficient pseudorandom generator. And then you can use a generic construction like Goldwasser Gold, and Mikali to get a full-blown PRF. You know, very nice, very short keys, but you need like a linear number of exponentiations in the security parameter. Or other constructions have been proposed of PRFs that you know, have short key, uh, one exponentiation or constant number of exponentiations, but rely on very exotic assumptions. For example, this Dodis Jampolsky PRF from QDDHI. So, summing up, this is like the state of the art for, the, for PRFs, and nothing better is actually known for Max. So, you know, Max, uh, PRFs are Max, not the other way around, but people don't know any, uh, best of our knowledge, people don't know anything better for Max. And in particular, previous to our work, it has not even been known if there exists, say, a MAC from DDH with a constant key size and a constant number of exponentiations. So stay tuned to see such constructions in a few minutes. So the kind of one, one motivation for this work was to say, you know, MACs are actually much weaker primitives than PRFs, and maybe we can do much better. So why are MACs weaker? So one reason is that Macs only have to be unpredictable, whereas PRFs have to be like, indistinguishable. And we don't know of any efficient generic transformations, at least to go from unpredictability to indistinguishability. So maybe this can be used somehow. For example, maybe using the fact that we just need unpredictability, we can start from search assumption, like computational Diffie-Hellman instead of uh, decisional Diffie-Hellman. And you will see such a construction later. And another. Uh, important difference between PRFs and MACs is that MACs can be probabilistic in general, whereas PRFs should be deterministic, or if you were at the workshop, Bellagio, so they should produce uh, the same output always on the same input. And if you want to construct a MAC, for, uh, if you want to construct a MAC from an assumption, for example, like the linear parity with noise assumption, which is inherently randomized, so lots of randomization, these random vectors, these random errors, it seems actually natural to, to, to shoot for a probabilistic construction where you get this randomness from somewhere. Okay, so how are Max? Okay, so now I've told you what the goal of this work is. We will look at the direct constructions of Max, avoiding this uh, detour over pseudorandom functions. So what is a Mac? 
I showed you the uh, definition, now let me give you the security definition. So we will say that the Mac is secure, or say unforgeable under chosen message and verification queries, if no efficient adversary exists who can win the following game. The adversary can make tag queries to the tagging algorithm and uh, verification queries to the verification algorithm, and we say he wins if at some point he makes a verification query that accepts and that contains a message M that he did not explicitly ask the tagging algorithm before. So quantitatively, we say, you know, T is the size of the adversary, epsilon the advantage, number of tag queries allowed, and number of verification queries allowed. Okay. So note that if you have like this unforgeability on the chosen message attacks for signature schemes, for example, there are no verification queries, simply because verification is public anyway. And maybe also if you've seen definitions for secret key max, you haven't seen this explicit uh, mention of the verification query, simply because if you have a deterministic MAC, which moreover has canonical verification, like this PRF-based MAC that I showed you before, so deterministic means the tagging algorithm is deterministic, canonical verification means verification just evaluates the tagging algorithm and checks if this tag here is correct. In this case, it actually doesn't make much of a difference if you have one verification query or many. There is a simple reduction showing, you know, if the MAC is secure against one verification query, it's secure against QV verification queries, and you lose, you know, something linear in QV in the distinguishing advantage, but besides that, this doesn't make a difference, but for probabilistic MACs, it makes a huge difference if the MAC is probabilistic or not. So there are, you know, you will see natural constructions of MACs which are secure against one verification query, but if the adversary can make many verification queries, in particular, he can get like a MAC and the tag and twiggle with the tag a little bit and see if it still verifies and make enough such queries, and from this actually recover the key completely. So before I come to the results of our paper, let me give you some two more, two more simple definitions. So if we have a MAC that is simply unforgeable under chosen message verification attacks with just one single verification query, so he only has like one shot for a forgery, we will something call this UFCMA, unforgeable under chosen message attacks. Moreover, we will consider a, a weakened notion called uh, selective security. So selective CMA or CMBA is defined exactly like unforgeability under CM chosen message attacks, except that now the adversary has to commit to the message that he wants later to forge before making any queries to its oracles. So it's a weaker notion. And then comes a completely uh, unrelated notion, apparently, like the indistinguishability notion. So we say that the MAC is in CMA if the following is true. If it is hard to distinguish the outputs of the tag algorithm for a secret key, so you can ask the tagging algorithm and it gives you the tags for a message M, from a tagging algorithm which simply ignores your input and always gives you the tag for some fixed message, say zero. Um, note that, first of all, this, this notion can only be achieved, oh no, first note that this notion by itself is completely useless because, you know, a tagging algorithm that outputs the constant zero is perfectly indistinguishable, but this notion will be interesting in conjunction together with this uh, standard unforgeability notion. And also note that if a Mac is like unforgeable and indistinguishable, it has to be inherently probabilistic because if it weren't, I could just ask two tags for two different queries. Here I would get two different answers. Here I would get two times the same answer, and I could distinguish. Okay, so let's come to the results that we have. We have like two, two batches of results. The first is about transformations. The second is about constructions. So our main result uh, about constructions, uh, transformations, is the following. We give a very efficient, very simple transformation that takes any map that is secure without verification queries, and on top of that, it has to be indistinguishable and show how to transform it into this full-blown notion uh, unforgeability with uh, verification queries. Okay, this is the main result. Like two minor observations that we will use, but which are really trivial, is uh, we show that you can use uh, universal hash functions for domain extension if you have a MAC that is in CMA and also like that if the MAC has very small range and the selective security is already secure in the standard sense, you're losing security exponential in the domain. But, you know, these are known things, and basically, and uh, we'll just use them. Okay, let's come to the second batch of our results. This will be constructions of algebraic max. So, we will give some general templates how to, uh, how to use existing tools and uh, constructions, for example, of, uh, of many different objects, uh, and get algebraic max from them. For example, we'll show how that we can start from any CCA secure public key encryption scheme, or more concretely, even from, from hash proof systems, and get this algebraic max. Now, this might seem completely stupid, you know, CCA, secure public, is a huge, powerful object, but even if we start from this object, the max that we get 
for example, based on DDH, we'll have like a constant size stack and the constant size secret key, which, as I mentioned before, hasn't been known before. Um, maybe a bit more interesting, we will show constructions based on things that are called key homomorphic uh, PRFs, which are trivially implied, for example, by DDH, and this will give us very simple constructions, you know, just two, um, two exponents in the secret key, two group elements in the tag, and this assumption to uh, this construction will be secure under DDH. I will show you this construction in a minute. And we can also get, um, you know, every signature scheme is a Mac, but uh, we can, using ideas from signature schemes, uh, we can get Macs um, that are much more efficient than the corresponding signature schemes. For example, we get a signature scheme that is constant size secret key, constant size stack. And what is interesting here is this assumption. So it's based on the computational assumption, computational Diffie Hellman. And we say this, you will see this in a minute. Okay. Okay, so if elf minutes. Oh, yeah. And actually, the original motivation for these transformations was actually a paper by, um, by Ike, myself, uh, Kashian and Venturi, last year on uh, efficient authentication from learning problem, where we showed how to construct efficient Macs. Actually, we've, it was phrased as authentication protocols, but you can see them as uh, Macs that do not allow verification queries from the LPN assumption. Now, using this new transformation that we have, we get like a Mac that is only slightly less efficient than the authentication protocol, and uh, yeah, and it's a full Mac. And in particular, gives you, for example, a man in the middle secure uh, protocol. So we had such, an, uh, such a transformation already in the paper last year, but it was much less efficient using like a pairwise independent permutation on the entire tag. Now we get away with just like a pairwise, in the, or, or pairwise independent hash functions with very short output, which is much more efficient. Okay, let's come to our transformation. So to our main transformation. And as said before, what our main transformation does, it, it takes any Mac that is unforgeable, but does not allow verification queries. And if on top of that, our Mac is indistinguishable, so you know, these tags from messages of your choice are indistinguishable from mass messages on the fixed, uh, fixed message zero, then this, this transformation here will take this Mac into a Mac that is uh, unforgeable in the full sense, right, with, with verification queries. So what does this transformation do? Um, the key generation algorithm of the, of the transform Mac basically runs the key generation of the underlying Mac to get some key K. And moreover, we pick a pairwise independent hash function H, which will be part of the secret key of the Mac. Now, to tag, this is the tagging algorithm of our new, con of our transform construction. So we take the message, we, we sample some short ground in B, we concatenate it with M and compute the tag on this concatenated message. We output this Z, which will be part of the tag. But moreover, we also hash this Z with this pairwise independent hash function that has a very short output and use this H of Z to blind this randomness used in this computation. And, you know, the verification does the natural thing. You know, it gets this B back. X storing twice gives you the B, concatenates it, and looks if what it gets is the same uh, as this output up here. And here's the theorem. It says, you know, if this is secure without verification queries, the entire thing is secure with verification queries. And let me spend one minute to give you an intuition how the proof works. So, Assume you have an adversary who is allowed to make verification queries and to kind of forge uh, forges uh, tags. So, you know, who can make the verification algorithm accept for a message he has not seen before. If you have such an adversary, the adversary can be of two types. So what we look at is we run this adversary and we look at the first message that the adversary makes to the verification, uh, verification oracle that accepts. Now we just that accepts. And now this message can, so this first message that accepts can be of two kinds. It can be fresh, fresh in the sense that the input to this underlying verification queries has not been used as the input uh, to a tagging algorithm before, or it can be like not fresh, which means this is not the case. Now, if our adversary is of, a, of the kind that most, you know, if it finds a forgery, then say at least in half of the cases this forgery, oh sorry, if our adversary is of the kind that the first accepting verification query it makes is fresh, we can use this adversary directly to forge the underlying Mac. We simply guess which query this is gonna be, we look what it is, and we output it as a forgery for the underlying Mac. But now it can be that the adversary always makes this verification queries and these inputs are not fresh. In this case, this is not actually a forgery for the underlying Mac, even though it's an accepting query for this thing. But in this case, we use this indistinguishability property, and we show that if this 
tagging algorithm here is not the typical tagging algorithm, but something that is independent of the input, like a tag for some fixed message zero, then you cannot find collisions, uh, collisions on this input here with, with the inputs that you have asked before for information theoretic reasons. So in this case, if the adversary finds collisions in this real setting, but can't find collision in this setting where this tagging algorithm is replaced with the, tagging al with the other oracle in this indistinguishability game, it means that we have a distinguisher for, uh, for this indistinguishability property. Okay, so here are the other two uh, transformations. I don't want to say much about this, so very simple observation that has been made in the context, I think, of IB and other things before. If you have a Mac that has small domain and is only secure against selective messages, you also get standard security, losing a factor exponentially in the message domain simply by guessing. Uh, slightly more interesting is the domain extension. So we know that if you have a pseudorandom function, there is a very simple way to make domain extension. You just use a pairwise independent hash function, or even the almost universal hash function, a non-cryptographic hash function in particular, to hash the input down it and you apply the PRF. This does not work for Macs in general because if you have a Mac, it leaks something about the input, and if you leak about the input, it leaks something about the function, and because the function is not cryptographic, you can find collisions once you have the description of this function. But if we make this additional uh, requirement that the, the Mac is, that has this indistinguishability property, this kind of captures what is necessary to make this domain extension work even with the pairwise independent hash functions. Okay. That's all I want to tell you about the constructions. So for the last few minutes of my talk, let me tell you a few words about the constructions that we have. So I will show you two constructions from key homomorphic uh, PRFs, and the other construction will be from signature schemes. So what is a key homomorphic PRF? That's the definition. It's a keyed family of functions, you know, from, uh, which for one thing, it's a weak PRF. So for a random key, this function is indistinguishable from a random function if queried on random inputs. So it's a relaxed, it's not a PRF, because a PRF should be indistinguishable on chosen inputs. It only looks random if queried on random inputs, if you get random input-output pairs. And moreover, it's key homomorphic. So this is this property here. Uh, this is written using like additive notation in groups. This is written using multiplicative uh, notation. So basically, yeah, look at it for a second. I will not say it. It's, you know, it's key homomorphic. So if you multiply the key with some uh, element A, you could also output, you could use the key K and out just multiply the entire thing with A and so on. Uh, maybe more intuitively to think about it is that the very simple function, so you have, if you have a group G where the DDH assumption holds, that the following is a key homomorphic uh, PRF. So the key, uh, the key is simply a ex so random exponent and it takes a group element X to, to X to the K. And you know, this has all these homomorphic properties, so here written multiplicatively that you would uh, like, and you can actually prove that this is a weak PRF uh, under the DDH assumption. So extremely simple construction. So how do, we get the, how do we get the MAC from such key homomorphic PRFs? That's the construction, so, so this is the PRF. This is, we, we sample two keys from this key homomorphic weak PRF. To compute the tag on the message M, we sample a random element X uh, a, a random x on the, in the domain of the function and output x evaluated on the key, you know, k2 plus our message times k1, and, you know, verification is canonical. So this is the instantiation what, that you get if you instantiate it, instantiate it with this DDH-based weak PRF that I showed you a few seconds ago. And the theorem that we have states the following. So if this is a key homo if f is a key homomorphic PRF, then this MAC is secure, secure in a very weak sense, only against selective, unforgeable, under chosen message attacks, no verification queries, but you know, then you throw out generic transformation on top of that, then you get uh, a full, full blown MAC. Okay, so let me come to the last construction. So our, uh, the last construction I will show you is based on signatures. Now you can say, a signature scheme immediately gives you a MAC, right? Just use, you know, a signature, a signature scheme as a public and a secret key, just, you know, keep, de declare the symmetric secret key to be this public secret key pair and uh, don't publish anything and of course you have a MAC this way. But this might be actually overkill because if you use a signature scheme as a MAC, this signature scheme has still this public verifiability property, right? So everyone who has a public key can verify a signature we don't need that anymore. So the idea is maybe we can take s signature schemes that are around there and kind of downgrade it. By downgrading, maybe we can make them much more efficient 
And even if this downgrading kind of loses the property of being publicly verifiable, we don't care. We just want the Mac. So here's the construction that we get if we apply this idea to a bonnet boyen signatures. So the original bonnet boyen signatures are in uh, bilinear groups. But you can just downgrade them to prime order groups, so you know, simplify everything like one step down. And what happens is we use the, you know, we, we suddenly can't verify anymore, but we don't care. But we get this Mac here. And here's the theorem. This Mac can be proven secure. Now, again, selective, unforgeable, under chosen message, no verification queries, under the gap CDH assumption. So if, if in this underlying group, CDH is hard, even given a DDH oracle. OK, maybe you want now a security proof under the standard CDH assumption. This is possible. We can go from gap CDH to CDH using the twinning technique of Cash et al. from Eurocrypt 08. And you know, this is the scheme you get. You know, it's roughly, instead of three elements, it has five, because we kind of twin these two elements. Um, yeah, and this scheme is secure under the standard CDH assumption. And if you weren't here last year, this is the, this is the Mac based on LPN. I won't say anything about it. And thanks for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>